the other point that I, you know, I wanted to make sure and touch on is, is everyone's talked about mutual recognition. Um, in, in my day, uh, we did begin a mutual re you know, recognition um, regime, and as Anthony s noted, um, just as I left, the U.S. reached an arrangement and, and an agreement with, uh, with Australia. And um, that wasn't by accident. Australia, it was determined with a lot of thought, was very much like the U.S. in terms of its patterns. And quite frankly, there was concern that it might not work. So if it failed, better with Australia than you know, a huge market like Europe. I mean, this was some of the thinking that, that went into that. And, uh, and, and that's why uh, we, we, have, we have this arrangement with Australia, and we stopped, we being at the time the SEC, stopped talking to Europe you know, once 08 arise, or arose or, or, or caused all these problems. And, and, and the SEC still hasn't gotten back, really, to, to mutual recognition. The, the term substituted compliance is a very good term, um, you know, because I think what it says is, look, um, we can do it piecemeal, we can figure out where we're the same, where the U.S. is the same as, as Europe, and eventually uh, end up finding a way to do it, and perhaps it's in stages, you know, while other re regulations develop. For example, this, uh, you know, settlement and clearance of OTC derivatives, right? Uh, who knows when that's going to be resolved in a way that uh, is consistent or, or harmonized uh, among, among um, the different markets. So uh, I, I support that, and I believe that uh, the SEC is open to it, uh, but it's just not a priority. They haven't even finished implementing Sarbanes-Oxley, and that may take yet another year or so. And, you know, we, we have now a government shutdown, so who knows what uh, that's going to do. And, and the credit, uh, you know, the debt ceiling, you know, is yet to come, so that, that still may affect the SEC and, and push down uh, mutual recognition as a, as a priority. Uh, I, I, I support the, the, the TTIP, uh, market convergence discussions, transatlantic market. I think all of those are things that, e even if they seem frustrating because uh, progress isn't being made, are, are good, are, provide uh, residual benefits in terms of informing regulators and informing um, you know, the private sector. Uh, I, I, will, I will end with a couple of points, essentially. Technology has become a very, very major item. The SEC today, for example, is using technology to study the markets, to study market manipulation, potentially fraud. And I think eventually that technology needs to be shared uh, worldwide. If, if the global markets together have the same view about enforcement, then I think everything else becomes much, much easier. Um, I think also that uh, regulators on both, uh, everywhere in the, in the globe, in China, the U.S., Europe, should look very, should listen very carefully to different players who want to access the markets. Um, uh, you, you know, it, you, you have to ask yourself if, if they are not, if they are complaining about access, then is there some protectionism going on here? And, and I believe that American players in Europe and vice versa, we've already seen that many European players are, and investors are in the U.S., all of that in the end is beneficial. Jobs are created on both sides, um, assets are allocated more efficiently, and costs hopefully and fees end up being lower. And so this, this is something that I would believe would be very beneficial and, and to have a very serious, on, on both sides, uh, attention to the private players who, uh, who have complaints, you know, why, why can't they access, or why, why are they subject to uh, a particular regime, or why can't they get an exemption. Uh, I think that would, will also end up uh, creating the, the cross currents that we need, you know, across the borders. So I could go on, but I'll, I'll stop here, and uh, hopefully we can have a, a very interesting conversation.